From Studio 3 at Buzz TV, it's The Horse's Mouth with Tom McManus. All right, time once again for Up Close and Personal here on The Horse's Mouth, of course, on Buzz TV and at my bar. At Tommy Max, where else would I be? Brought to you by Carpet Man Floor and my good friends over there. And my good friend joins me now. Yeah, we're talking ball, baby, with uh, former head coach of the Dallas Cowboys, a coach for the Jags, coach all over the place. It's Dave Campo here on the show. Coach, how are you, my man? I'm good, Tom. It's how great to see Thanks you. Thanks for having me on. This is a beautiful setting. Here. Thank you very much. It's an honor to have have you on my friend and I, I know we've been spent a lot of time together out at the Jags practice we'll get into that looking at your resume we, I know you're a defensive back player right yes did you always coach defense when did you get right into the, that position and then were you always just going to be a defensive coach or how did that come to fruition? well actually I was uh, at a division two school okay. in college so I actually was a starting wing back and then I was okay. the back back up, okay. and I was the travel squad safety. So that's probably why I went into okay. coaching. Nice. But I really started out at New London High School in Connecticut, and I was a head freshman coach. Yep. And then I was that's automatically great. the defensive backfield coach on the varsity. And we wow. won the state championship, won the freshman league. I started to think I could do it. Coach, this look all at of you. A sudden. Yeah. So I really have been on defense the whole time. I coached cool. the linebackers at where I played Central Connecticut for. Yep. A, for a, uh, a couple of years, and then from then on, I've been defensive backfield. So I, I know you came from uh, Q's to Miami, correct? Yes. And then Miami, you went with Jimmy to the Dallas Cowboys, correct. and then eventually became the head coach. Prior to all that, I know uh, that's a grind. Talk about the grind you coaches go. Everyone like sees you on the Super Bowl or sees you on right. game day, like, wow, look at that. What a great job he must have. But they don't know what it took to get to that point. There's well, a lot of grinding in a, your profession. A lot of traveling. Yeah. You know, I was yeah. I was at university, uh, Albany State University for a year. I was at Bridgeport for a year. I was at Pitt for a year. Right. I was at Washington State for a year. I was at Boise State for three, and on and on. Yeah. And, you know, ended up at uh, at Syracuse, and I was there for three years. But yep. it was a about eleven years. I moved like six times. Yeah. And that's the gig, though, right? I mean, yeah, that's that, what you that's, have to do in order to find your your path. You know, back in the day, uh, one of my favorite guys is Tony Wise. Who was the yeah, I remember Tony. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, line coach for us with yeah. Dave Wanstead at at, uh, at Chicago and yep. Miami. Of course. He was a graduate assistant for five years before he got his first head coach, wow. first yep. job, period. Yep. And so it was a grind back then, and that's the way you did it. You just didn't yep. worry about too much about money just go yeah go coach and get your name out okay there. you get to Miami in 1989 so I grew up in Chicago and I remember Miami versus Notre Dame the the convicts versus the Catholics I was Catholic but was pulling for the convicts for some reason I don't know why but what was it like coaching at the U with Jimmy Johnson well, back we in the early had some convicts <laughs> you know, I mean, that's, for sure. that's okay but the interesting thing was it was great by the yeah. way it was one of my favorite jobs because the, the the kids that played there were all kids a majority of them were kids coming from tough backgrounds okay. and yep. when Jimmy got there the graduation rate wasn't very good by the time he left it was like 90 percent oh nice very but nice these guys were kind of on the edge yeah the Michael Irvin type guys yeah. you know yeah. Michael was there before and they were getting summer. parks and recreation degrees weren't right. they exactly coach? there was like some that. there was some uh, shady degrees <laughs> something like that but Miami kind of looked yeah. at itself as the Harvard of the South right so, that's right so you know they had to do a few things but okay. that was really great I, I, I enjoyed uh one of the great things I'll be honest with you one of the great things in my background coaching with the defensive backs yep all those years, uh, cultural differences. Sure. I, 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 you know, a lot of black kids at that time, yep. and, and especially at the University of Miami. Yep. And it was great because these guys loved ball. They yep. wanted to be around. And yeah, they wanted to win titles. A great deal. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You go to Dallas, you have a lot of success, of course. You're the head coach there as well, coaching for the America's team. I don't know if I'd still call them America's team today, no disrespect to the Cowboys. But back then they were. What was it like, man, in the the whole thing? Well, the it, was, it was obviously we had a, a job to do. You know, we yep. were one in fifteen the first year, and then uh, yep. seven and nine, then uh, twelve and five, and yep. then win the Super Bowl. So right, four right. years. Yeah. So it, it was a, a little bit of a job, but uh, we had a good coaching staff. Four of us off that staff ended up head coaches in the league. Yep. And so you know, it was it was we had kind of. 
you know, we had 17 guys drafted one year out of Miami. Holy cow. So we had been around a lot of yeah. what you would call pro athletes, sure. style athletes. Yep. Yep. So it wasn't that big of a, a change. And in the old days, you didn't coach that much different from what you, what you did in college and what yeah. you did in the NFL. Yeah. You came here under Del Rio, right? You coached on Del Rio staff. You guys had a lot of success. What was your last coaching gig? Because I know you're retired. You're retired now, right? Yes. Fully? You know do you do any consulting or anything like well, that? Well, I did team? two years of consulting okay. uh, with okay. the defense at uh, University of Southern California. Okay, USC. But that cool. finished in 2019. And, okay. And I've been back. I was always, yeah. It's always the Jags. That's I right. I was going to be back here in, in uh, Jacksonville from the very beginning. And That's great. We just ended up back here. You, lo you love it, too. You're on 1010 XL. You're out there covering the team. You do a great job with that. I know you enjoy really talking about football. Football never leaves you. It, it just doesn't ever leave yeah. you if you're, if you're involved in it. Well, you know, you know from your background, yeah. some of your best friends are the guys that you went to high school with yeah. and college yeah. were yeah. athletes. Right. Right. Guys on the football team. So, yeah. you know, I, I think it's really uh, a small world. It is. You know, I special. run into guys, uh, and, they, and if they know who you are, yeah. it's an automatic conversation. You yeah, know? And no doubt. Being the head coach of the Cowboys, I get, you know, yeah. there are quite a few people that know who I am at least. Yeah. I didn't it's do a special, that well as a head coach, but they know they who I am. They still know who you are. It's a special bond, too. We, yeah. we saw Pat Kerwin and Jimmy yes. Miller, yes. Uh, two stars on radio with Sirius yes. covering the NFL. They were practice day. Jimmy was a team. I haven't seen him in like 10 years. Big hug. It's yeah. like we never yeah. like never didn't see. You know what I mean? It's just it, just a really nice, special that's relationship. That's the great part of yep. it. And, and especially, you know, you had success here sure. with the Jags. Yep. You had success at Boston College. Yep. When you win, that bond is even stronger. Without a doubt, because you, know, you go so, through that struggle. You know, I struggle. look at the guys. We, I went to a reunion at the University of Miami last year yep. uh, of the national championship team mm. in 87. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I had maybe uh, 18 DBs on that team, and like 16 of them showed up at the reunion. That's fantastic. And that's, that's a long time ago. That's 1987. No doubt. No so, doubt. You stick together. It's a, yeah. it's a bond that never ends. All right, let me wrap up with this. You mentioned uh, I love talking to you on the side level. You said something to me, and I knew this. You guys are a big fraternity. What's the advice you'd give to a young coach? You just met one of them, the coaches at University of Christian. What would you tell Because I know it's all about relationships. Absolutely. But what would you tell them? Uh, you know, and you should do this as a person anyway, but there's two things you should do. Number one, you treat everybody the same. Yep. It doesn't matter whether the guy's the equipment manager, whether he's whoever he is, yep. or the head coach, yep. and you don't burn bridges. Those two things, I think, lead you a long way. And, yep. and uh, I had a situation in Miami when I went down there real yep. quickly. Yeah. Uh, there were like seven guys on that staff from the AD down yeah. that I had worked with, and I thought I had a great shot at the job. Little did I know that Jimmy Johnson walked downstairs to the training room, yep. and there was an assistant trainer down there, a black kid by the name of Al Bellamy, who's still in the NFL. Okay, cool. And the first thing he said, he's house Campo with the black kids. Yeah. Now, if he just said, well, you know, you, yeah, you know, Jimmy wouldn't have I had would it. not have gotten that job. Yeah, right, so, right. So, you know, you treat everybody. Uh, that gra He was a, a graduate assistant for us, the yep. young man. Yep. and. Obviously, I treated it pretty good. Yeah. Hey, it it's the old good. adage, treat people the way you want to be treated. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, we're going to get more out of you, all right? You just hang right there. More to come with Dave Campo, the head football coach, and, of course, on 1010XL, covering our Jags as well. We're going to get into the Jags. We're going to get into the stadium. We're going to fill up this bar. All coming up next right here on The Horse's Mouth. Stay tuned. Hey, Tom McManus here with Carpet Man Flooring. Wow, warehouses the size of football fields filled with rolls of carpet and LVP. That's luxury vinyl planking. LVP. Carpet Man's LVP. Carpet Man. Carpet Man's LVP. The luxury beneath your feet. Our prices, they can't be beat. LVP. Carpet, carpet Man's, Man's LVP. LVP. Carpet Man Flooring, your hometown flooring store. 